everybody. So we've got a fun review today as we're discussing Monarch Legacy of Monsters. It took a long time, but Apple TV Plus, they finally got me. All it took was having a show on their service centered around the Monsterverse at large, which is a universe that I have mostly enjoyed, especially as I am a lifelong fan of Godzilla. So you can imagine why this show would intrigue me so much. Set after the battle between Godzilla and the Titans, revealing that monsters are real, Monarch Legacy of Monsters follows one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy that links them to Monarch. Full disclosure, all of my thoughts in this review are based around watching the first five episodes of the show. Those are the ones that were provided for us early. But as a longtime fan of the kaiju genre at large, you can imagine most of my interest in this universe does revolve around the monsters, the titans, the kaiju, whatever term you want to call them in this universe. Even if occasionally I'm not as fond of the human elements in these monsterverse films, I have found myself being quite fascinated with the mystery surrounding Monarch at large, considering that we've only kind of scratched the surface on what Monarch is all about in these films. If finding out more about Monarch is a topic that intrigues you, I think that this show provides a solid itch in terms of filling in the gaps with interesting details. Legacy of Monsters is the type of series that showcases a lot of material with dueling narratives, both of which involve uncovering various secrets, which mostly I found to be quite fascinating, and then you also throw into a mix a couple titans here and there. The main narrative that we follow is set about one year after the events in the first Godzilla film back in 2014, following two half-siblings that discover their missing father's secrets link them back to Monarch and attempt to piece this mystery together while Monarch is on their tail. And our other main storyline is flashbacks of several decades prior to the beginnings of Monarch, with several different characters, one of them being a younger Leland Shaw played by Wyatt Russell, and in the older timeline it is played by his father, Kurt Russell. That is one of the cool details about this show that I liked a lot is the fact that you have a father and a son playing the same character just many decades apart. Certainly saves you a lot of cost in terms of de-aging. Not only do they look similar, why it just nails his father's mannerisms perfectly, you very much feel like this is the exact same character decades apart, once Leland makes his appearance in the 2015 storyline. In recent years, we have seen quite a lot of different shows have quite lucrative budgets, so the VFX work is astounding, but it was something that I was hesitant about going into Monarch Legacy of Monsters, just because there are a lot of different monsters, it's in the title of your show. Are they going to be able to showcase all these different monsters, make them look good VFX-wise, and if they are able to showcase them, are they going to be on screen a whole lot? And to me personally, I was amazed at how well this show looked in general visually, VFX-wise or otherwise. It's a very well-shot show. Other than a few minute sequences here and there where you very much can tell it's a VFX background, it's one of the best-looking shows that I've seen this year so far. It almost felt like the show knew that the fans were going to be concerned off the bat on if they can actually showcase these creatures and make them look great on a streaming show, because we literally open up with this epic battle on a cliffside on Skull Island between Mother Longlegs and one of the crab creatures that are on Skull Island as well. And that was pretty awesome, although it was weird to have John Goodman there as a brief little cameo. If anything, it just made me wonder when he had time to film this message, throw a bag into the ocean before he was killed in Kong Skull Island. If you're concerned about the screen time for these monsters, there's pretty much Titan action in every single episode in some shape or form, whether it's with the flashbacks or in the 2015 storyline. One of the more cool aspects to this, which some fans might like or dislike, is a lot of the monsters in the show are monsters that we've not seen before. Or at the very least, none that I could recall. And that did make some of these scenes much more exciting when we do get into these engagements with Titans and they're a character we've never seen before and have no idea what their power sets are. There's one Titan in particular that I think was the most cool. It's a large creature that has the face that looks like a star face mole. If you want to Google what that is, that's pretty much what this monster looks like. Then there are the more recognizable Titans that we've seen before in the Monsterverse films. There's some stuff about the movie toes early on. One character that we all care about the most in this show, it's in all the promotional material, it's on the poster, it's Godzilla. Let's talk about Godzilla at least a little bit. I can definitely tell you that Godzilla is in the show and he appears a handful of different times. He looks phenomenal whenever he does appear. And you see him in all of his glory and they don't cut away like the 2014 film. And you see him in broad daylight, basically. Regardless of him popping up here and there, just don't expect him to be doing anything crazy like you've seen in the MonsterVerse films. He's not going out there and fighting a giant creature or anything. A major aspect I liked a lot about this show is the way that it is tying in these characters and filling in the gaps in all the different storylines because we even get a new 
perspective of that exact same scene from 2014 when Godzilla was attacking the bridge and how it links back to Kate's character because she was on that bridge as that event happened and seeing it from her perspective I thought made the event even more horrifying. At large the suspense at play is fairly engaging as tidbits of info are unraveled each episode about Kate and Kentaro and them finding out more about their dad's involvement with Monarch and the birth of Monarch, their humble beginnings before the government got involved and pretty much ruined everything. Not gonna lie, as the episodes went on and we unraveled more and more of the story at large in the 2015 storyline, the flashbacks did start to feel a little bit gratuitous, mainly the Wyatt Russell ones. At first they were quite interesting, we watched the relationships build and they have solid moments amongst the group, and the first episode has an exciting cliffhanger ending with their flashback where it seems like one of them lost their life. Then weirdly we decide to have another flashback that's set before then where we get to see Wyatt Russell's character meet this person that presumably possibly lost their life. It's just weird storytelling decisions like that where I feel like we could have just told that in order. And in similar fashion there is kind of a romance angle in the story between Kentaro's character and May's character played by Kersey Clemens. They used to love each other at one point in time and we don't know why necessarily they stopped liking each other and then we see flashbacks of them meeting. Seeing their relationship grow and I guess disintegrate at the exact same time. That is not the type of stuff I come to for a monster verse show. It just feels so weirdly out of place with everything going on in the show. Which is a shame because I think Kiersey Clemens is doing a great job but similar to her role in The Flash she is very much wasted as a character. Her character doesn't have much stakes in this adventure. She's kind of just brought along because she's the tech guru. She doesn't know Kurt Russell's character. She doesn't know Kate. And she had a falling out with Kentaro so her whole purpose for the majority of the show that I've seen she is the tech person. Despite that however the main cast of the show is quite solid. I like Kate's character a whole lot and Leland Shaw I mean Kurt Russell is just a gem. He is just a big ball of charisma and charm and plays a large part in staying engaged while they're on the run from Monarch while trying to stay alive as they come across Titans traveling around the globe. Now some episodes are better than others in terms of excitement and pushing the narrative forward feeling rewarded that they're filling in the gaps of info in the monsterverse that you might have wanted to know about. Out of the five episodes I've seen I think the first two take the cake as far as the strongest overall maybe in part because Matt Shackman directed those episodes which has me even more excited for him to be doing Fantastic Four eventually. I definitely recommend this show a whole lot if you're a big fan of the MonsterVerse at large because I feel like you're probably not going to have as much interest in this show otherwise. It's very much catered towards the MonsterVerse fans. I just really hope they stick the landing because there are certain points as the episodes go on and we are getting little tidbits of info and big reveals. It does seem like we are stretching out this show because it is 10 episodes long. The stretching out portion of the mystery is heavily affecting all of the stuff around finding their father. A lot of that stuff is very fetch quest heavy. Overall though, I think that Monarch Legacy of Monsters is a solid addition to the MonsterVerse. It has mystery, intrigue, a good amount of awesome Titan action. So if you're a big MonsterVerse fan and you want to have something to hold you over until the next Godzilla and Kong film, maybe give this a watch. If you guys want me to, I very much will consider talking about this show week to week, much like I do with other shows on the channel. Whenever I've heard my thoughts on the show, make sure you share your thoughts down below once you get a chance to check out the show. Do you like the show? Did you not like the show? Share your thoughts and theories down below because part of the fun of this is having that conversation with you guys in the comment section down below. And thank you guys as always for videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel to update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. For next time, I'll see you guys later.